Today this is going to be a follow along for straddle pancake and straddle splits. Hopefully now there's two cool positions here that I've just achieved after doing this workout. So at the end of the workout I'm going to take videos or pictures and they're going to be here right now. And I'm just going to show you my before. So the goal with this workout is to get our biggest impact, our biggest change in a small amount of time. So just with like 15 to 20 minutes. So first of all straddle pancake position. So this is the before. That feels really tight today. So that's my before position and then straddle split. So literally that feels super, super tight at the moment. I'm really sore, I've been doing lots of strength training, conditioning stuff and then lots of walks and I haven't been doing as much stretching as I normally would have. Obviously we're only gonna get to your current potential but jump in, join in, see how much you can get in about 20 to 30 minutes and hopefully we'll get your best possible position today. And then obviously if you carry on with this style of training, this style of stretching, you should see a big progress in four, six, eight, ten 10 weeks, two months, three months, six months. So number one, let's start to floss the hips. So just go into a slightly wider straddle position. So there, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop one knee. I'm taking the knee forwards, I'm sitting the hip back into the position. So I'm trying to sink this hip as much as possible, come back up again. I'm also trying to keep the torso nice and upright. So these are Cossack mobility squats. Slowly explore the depth. It should start to feel easier and easier. You might also need to explore the distance your feet are apart. So everyone will have a position that feels a bit more comfortable for them. Try and keep that foot flat. So the temptation is to lift that foot straight away. We don't want to dump into the hamstring too early. We want to try and get into the hips a bit more. We can start to floss it from different directions, some angles, some rotation, just see how that feels. And then start to sit into the position a bit more. From now I'm gonna go into an elevated pigeon position. So I'm just gonna place my foot and my shin across the box like that. I'm gonna have both hands on the box and I'm gonna sit my hip down into the position. Let's turn that sideways so you can see how deep I'm going. I'm particularly tight in pigeon position, especially at the moment. So I'm not restricting myself with the back leg. I'm allowing that to control the movement in terms of the depth. And I'm sitting the hip into the position. I'm also leaning forwards a little bit. Now this one, if it doesn't feel comfortable for you, you can raise the knee up a little bit to make it slightly easier, or you could do the opposite and raise the foot if it's really comfortable for you. If it is very comfortable for you, you can go no hands. You don't need such a big box as well if it's more comfortable for you. But a lot of people that go onto the floor will find the hip flexor on the back leg will get in the way. So swap over, do the same thing. So no real technique in terms of method PNF stretching, things like that. I'm just open and closing the position. So I'm just going in and out of the stretch, getting a feel for how much I can push it, not hanging around for too long in the position. It's more like, again, flossing the joints. You can hear Rosie drinking. She's just been for a long walk for me and the wife. Now I'm gonna grab a foam roller and start to go into thoracic mobility. So even though we're focusing on hips and lower body, I would still open up as much as you can through the spine. That makes a massive difference to what the hips are doing. If you don't have a foam roller, jump up, do a passive hang or a shoulder stretch or even just some spinal articulations against the wall. If you don't know what they are, that's this type of movement, so soft knees, all of the spine against the wall. You can be a bit soft around the low back, so the low back's not against the wall. Now I'm gonna push the low back to the wall, go into a posterior tilt, and then roll up through the spine, segment by segment, all the way off the wall, and then back down again. So the idea is that you're trying to move each segment of the spine one by one onto the wall, back off again to the anterior tilt on the low back, and then posterior to and roll back up again. So they're good alternatives or good additions if you haven't got the front roller or anywhere to hang. Now let's isolate the hamstring. So one foot up on the box, try and keep the spine flat. So we don't wanna be holding this position. If you find that's the case and it's really hard to do it, you could lay down on the floor into an easier position, something like this. This will keep the spine flat and put the leg up there. If that's too hard, move away from the box. Make sure this leg is dead straight. 
But if you have that comfortable, jump up onto the box in that position. Now you can play around with the distance your foot is on the box to make this slightly easier, but just get into a position where you can put your hands on the box. So if the foot was more on the edge, obviously this is gonna be harder to get to the box. So make sure you can comfortably reach the box there. And then all we're gonna think about is start to walk the hands closer to the foot or along the box. And notice that I'm laying my belly onto my thighs. So what we don't wanna do is be in this position and have a big gap here. I'm gonna close this gap. So if I can, anterior tilt, you can even pull the femur backwards, try and get the belly towards the thigh, lean in chest towards the knee, and then walk hands forwards as far as you can. And then you can even pull the foot back a little bit as well or drag the femur backwards. If you wanna wind the calf up as well, you can grab hold of the foot and pull that back. And then reach in towards that toe with the head. So think about head going towards the toe, not head going towards the knee. If head goes towards the knee, that's causing this gap to happen and also lots of flexion. We wanna think about lengthening the spine against the length of the hamstring and the leg. And then eventually head will get closer and closer towards that toe. I need to get that back as well, head to toe. Okay, same thing on the other side. Now you will notice there'll be difference between left and right. So sink into that hyperextended position. Really try and pull backwards with that femur. Try and get the belly onto the thigh, chest towards the knee, head towards the toe. Start to walk those hands closer and closer to the foot or beyond the foot. Slide that foot back as much as you can. And then if you can, try and pull that foot back towards you closer and closer towards that head to toe. Reach in as much as you can. This is giving me a good stretch in the calves. Nice, and then we're gonna use the box. Now, if you don't have a box, you could use something else in front of you, like a chair. Then I'm gonna go into that Cossack position again, but I'm gonna use my hands on the box to allow me to put a little bit more weight forwards and cheat a little bit. So I'm gonna lean forwards into the position, allowing the shoulder now to come in front of the knee. So it's a lot more straddly, a lot more pancakey, and uh, sit deeper into the position. Same thing though, I'm trying to keep that foot flat on the floor of the straight leg. I'm trying to sit the hip back and down as much as possible. And then you can just lean into the box at the bottom position and hang out there a little bit, floss that bottom position to see how that feels. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna try and sit deep into that hip. You can play around with how much rotation. You can even rotate to that straight leg over to the other side towards that straight leg like that. And then just really floss in and out. It should start to feel like it's opening up quite a bit now. Now a quick quad stretch now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise my knee up, up onto a mat, and then I'm gonna go into a lunge position. I'm gonna take this left foot up in the air, see if I can grab hold of the left foot so I can pull it up towards my butt. Trying to really open this position as much as possible. So we don't wanna be closed through there. So open it up. Another option is you can put this foot up against the couch. It's called the couch stretch or the wall, which makes it much, much harder to escape and cheat. Try and keep everything square. And then we just open up into the hip flexor a bit more by dropping forwards. So I'm trying to take the hip forwards in that direction while keeping my glute on, or my abs on a bit, so I'm in a slight posterior tilt instead of arching through the low back. So you can squish into the position and then push back again. And then same on the opposite side. So lift up that other leg. Oh, that right side is much tighter. And that's the case for most people is right side will be much tighter than the left. So get a comfortable position where that heel's closer to the butt. A nice upright torso, make sure that's fully open through that hip and then drop the hip forwards, push into the position. A few repetitions there, trying to really wind that up. Should feel it all down in the quad and or the hip flexor, depending on where you're tight and how much you're pushing forwards into the position. 
Okay, and now let's test our straddle pancake position. They should have opened a little bit up compared to that first position. Now here we do have a few options in terms of the setup depending on your flexibility. So I'm showing the one with the increased hip height at the moment. Now this isn't too much hip height if you need more. If you sit like this, we definitely need to raise up even more. Some of you might even need to have slight bend knee position, be up on even a bench or a, or a chair and then leaning forwards in that position, wherever you feel like you can get more of a flat back. So ideally we'll be sitting down at this position in a straddle, get the butt cheeks out of the way, so lift them on so you get more to your sit bone. And then I'm just gonna place the hands on the floor. And then in this position, I'm gonna try and keep the chest upright, trying to lengthen as much as I can through the spine. And then I'm gonna walk my hands forwards as far as I can. Now, sooner or later, it's gonna to start to get interesting, so you're gonna get a bit tighter there. So I can feel what we've done already has really helped me, and this is much more comfortable than it was at the start. And I can start to push that even more. Now, another option, if you are a little bit more flexible, is to have your elbows on the floor, and then do the same thing. So all you're doing is taking the hands and the elbows further away from you, still trying to lengthen the spine in that direction. And wherever you get stuck, just breathe, take some nice deep breaths there. And then as you exhale, see if you can get a little bit more deeper into the position. So that's starting to get way more comfortable now for me. Should start to feel a bit easier for you, depending on how rigid you are there, how stuck you are. Mine's just a lack of mobility training in the last four or five weeks, as opposed to 10 years, as it was when I started 10 years ago doing these styles of stretching. I'll put up my before and after of my straddle from 10 years ago. Nice, then we come back out of that position. Now into one of my favorite stretches at the moment, so we'll just go into the frog stretch, so into this position, but I'm gonna make this a little bit more interesting towards middle splits. So frog position like that, and then I'm just gonna take one leg out to the side. Now I'm pushing that foot to the floor, trying to extend as much as I can into that position. Push down, also try and take that knee a little bit further. Now I can move forwards and backwards in this position. I'm trying to keep roughly though my hip in line with my knee, so my bent knee. So in that position, it looks like that. Then I extend the foot out, that position, and then I'm still trying to keep that hip roughly in line with the knee. You can move in and out. You'll notice some positions will feel harder and some will feel easier. And then doing the same thing, but over to the other side. So really trying to sit into it, forwards and backwards, flossing that hip position. And again, if we look from there, sit from the side, oh, wrong one, extend that one. I want to extend that because again, my left side is much happier to go out than my right. And then to look at our middle splits, let's do the same thing. So I'm first gonna go into that position, take one leg out to the side, sit there. Now I can use my hands or my elbows, and then from here, I'm gonna lift up, take the other leg out to the side. And then I can just sit in the closed hip. So closed hip means I'm leaning forwards onto my hands, or my elbows in that middle split position. And then I can see that from the side. So there, and then from this position, we're gonna see how much we can lift up. Now you might already be up with your hands or elbows on a box. And then I'm just gonna start to walk in. And ideally we would get all the way up and put all the way into the feet and have less weight in the hands. I'm feeling right out of condition at the moment and can't do that. But I'm starting to get my range back there a little bit just after that few exercises we've done so far. So if you need to with that one, we can be elbows, hands on a box, whether that's like that, or in that position, or even on a much higher box in that position. You might just need to walk like a cowboy, shake the hips out a little bit. 
Okay, now I'm gonna go back into that straddle plank out position, but I'm gonna have some help from a weight plate. Now, I'm using a 20 kilo. You could even use like a 25 kilo with this one. Don't get scared by the weight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have the weight pull us in that direction. We're not gonna put it on our back. So I'm gonna sit in this position again, grab hold of the butt cheeks, move them out of the way, get onto the sit bones, turn the plate so it's in front of you. Now I can just determine how much help it's given me by how much tilt the plate has. So if I go that way and it tilts more, it's obviously gonna pull me in that direction more. If I have a little tilt on it there, it's just gonna give me a little bit of help. So I'm not getting the 20 kilos into my hips, I'm just getting you know, three or four kilos of extra help taking me in that direction. And notice it is really pulling there and not taking me down, which is really good. Now I can bring that closer to me and then it's gonna lean over even more and that will increase the tensity, the pull in that direction and the load. But again, it's not a massive load, it's more of a strong pull in that direction and like constant and I'd come in and out of the stretch with whatever you feel comfortable with, like 10 seconds is a good place to be, like five, 10 seconds in the stretch and then pull out of it and come in the opposite direction and then go back down again. Something else you can do with the plate is to get it here and you can let it go. And now I've got things to pull on. So I can pull on the top or the center of the plate. I can get my hands around the top and I can pull myself towards it, which is another good way of controlling the intensity. So you can wind it up as much as you want to without having the weight directly on your back, which is not a bad exercise. It's just obviously quite progressive. Another one with the weight plate, which is good is to go to the sides. And if you get the top, the hand on the top of the plate when it's at the side and bounce there, it's really gonna tie in that quadratus laborum, that lat, and get a little bit deeper into the pancake in a different angle. Now these can both be done without the plate. You could have someone else in front of you. You could have a band onto something, you could have a rope, you could just hold onto some furniture, just don't pull the TV on top of you. I could take my shoulder down towards my knee, hand over the top or up in the air, see if you can grab hold of your foot, pull that. So you're still getting that same stretch, that similar stretch. If anything, this one can get you a little bit deeper. Um, and then obviously do the same thing over the other side. Okay, next let's visit the middle split again. So this time we're gonna do an open hip position first. So remember, open hip means this, closed hip is this. So we're just gonna walk out as deep as we can, keeping that hip open. And again, you're just gonna find your depth that you can get to, keeping the hip open. So for me today, it's only about there. So I say only, I can normally get much deeper. I just haven't been doing this enough recently. And I'm, notice I'm trying to push my feet flat onto the floor as well. So some people will point their toes, some people will let their feet come up. Personally, I wanna to get to the point where I can hold full deep middle split position between chairs or between two objects and have control over that middle split. So I wanna have the feet flat. So I have to condition the ankles to get into that position. So as I'm getting deeper, I'm also trying to condition the ankles to keep the feet flat. Now, if I need to, I could have hands on a box. I could go much, much higher and just stay here. So if I'm not so conditioned in that split position, I can be like this. Okay, now from that open hip position, I'm gonna close the hip, place the hands down on the floor. Now here I can get so much deeper, sink into the position. And I can sit the hip back slightly, which allows me to nearly get all the way to the floor. So if you look at what the hip's doing here, in this position, I'm sitting the hip backwards, so going that way, and I'm allowing the torso to lean forward. So this is where the straddle split comes in. So it's way more straddled. And then the closed hip position could be here like that. So exactly the same thing. I'm just being a little bit more cautious, not winding up too much. Just give myself time to relax in that position. Okay, then I'm gonna come back out again. So this time I'm gonna make the Cossack squat a little bit easier. I'm gonna loop this band. Now it could be a rope or a 
strap from your rings or something like that, just up to an anchor point. If it's higher, it's a little bit more helpful. And then I'm gonna stand in my split position. So this is gonna help me get deeper in my Cossack squat. So I'm still gonna try and keep this leg straight, this one on the floor, this foot on the floor. I'm gonna bend this knee, sit into this hip as much as I can. Now when I get to this position, I'm gonna turn this foot and allow myself to sit into the hamstring. Now I can get all the way down onto the floor. I can close this leg over. I could lean forwards if I wanted to. Now I'm gonna come back out and at the right point, whoops, I need a little more help. I'm gonna pull out of that position and then back up again. Same thing on the opposite side. So sit down into that position. When I need to let that foot come up, sit into that position, back again, back down, and then I can get back out of there. Now you don't have to go all the way to the floor. You could put a box or a step or something there to sit onto. If you can do it, you can do it with no band as well. Now I'm not sure whether I'll get it today with how my body's feeling. I can get down, I can notice I rock backwards a lot. So this bit is gonna have to take some momentum to get back out. Let's see if I've got it on this side. This is feeling tight. Oh, look how much I need to come out of there. So I'm gonna have to need to use my hands to get back out today and get back up again. So don't be scared to use your hands if you need to. Feel how your body is. And raise the hips up onto a chair or something if you need to. Now you don't have to go to the floor with that one. You could just use the hamstring. So when it gets to here, turn the foot up, sit deeper into it. Same thing on the other side. Come down, turn that foot, sit into the position, come back out. So you could do some repetitions there, trying to keep it as clean, as deep as possible without leaning forwards, without turning the foot until the last moment. So make it challenging. And then let's look at the last positions. So for one more time, sit into that pancake. Now let's measure our pancake. So get the butt cheeks out of the way. See what you can get to touch the floor. So if you see if you can get one elbow, if you can't get one elbow, put something in the way. So put a hand there, put fingers there. So you've got that reference point. If you can get one elbow, see if you can go two elbows. If you can do two elbows, see if you can get head to fist or head to fists. And then belly and chest to the floor if you have it. And let's do the same for our middle splits. So this time I'm gonna start in the closed hip position. I'm gonna get down on the floor first. I'm gonna walk out as far as I can in the closed hip. So there, and then I'm gonna try and open the hip up as much as I can. So I'm trying to take the hip in that direction. Now I'm not gonna lift my hands up today. Some days I can get enough forwards, enough purchase with the feet so I can lift the hands up. That's not happening today, I'm not happy today. So let me know down in the comments if you followed along and whether you saw a big difference between your cold position and your warmed up position. You could also use this as a follow along one to two times per week. And then week to week, month to month, you should start to see a big difference between your previous cold position and your previous warmed up position. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks guys.